Has this ever happened to you? You've been playing your Nintendo Switch Lite when all of a sudden, oh no, you drop it on the only brick in your entire house which you just happen to be playing above. You hope it's all good, but you take a look and holy shit. You have just ruined your Nintendo Switch. The joystick is completely fucked up. What are you ever gonna do if there is only some way we could replace it? Well, good thing there is a way to replace your joystick. Good morning, you glorious gamers. Garbs here, and yes, I actually did drop and break my Switch Lite. I actually dropped this when we were playing our Mario Kart Live Circuit, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll post it right here. But yeah, I dropped it and completely fuckered my Switch. So I thought I might as well bring you guys along my journey of fixing my Switch Lite in case this ever happens to you. And as always guys, super smash that like button and hit subscribe so you guys can keep up with everything I'm doing in the gaming world. So without further ado, let's get on with it and fix our Switch Lite by replacing the joystick. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need is our broken Switch Lite. And we'll just put that in the center right here. And of course, you're gonna need your handy dandy micro tools. So I'll be sure to include the link in the bottom of the description of where I got mine on Amazon. And finally, in terms of supplies, you're gonna need your replacement joystick. Now this package that I got off of Amazon, I'll also include it in the description, was really helpful because it also came with tools of its own. So if you don't have a micro kit, that's totally okay because these seem like they'll do just fine. Now that we have all of our supplies, let's get on with it with the first step. All right, here we go. So step the first, we are gonna remove the four screws from the back of the switch. One, two, three, four. I don't know the exact size, but you'll figure it out and it's one of the two screwdrivers that come with the set or use your multi-tool. So we're gonna remove those first and then we're gonna move on to the top and bottom two as well. So we're gonna speed through this because I'm sure you guys all know how to use a screwdriver, but the one thing I am gonna mention is that these screws are really, really small. So make sure that you have some sort of dish or an extra tray so that you don't lose them. Now that we have all the screws out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little plastic tool and slowly start to pry apart the shell. Now take your time, it is really tricky. Just be patient, you don't wanna break anything. And then it'll be fully removed and there we go, the inside of a switch light and the heat shield. Now when it comes to replacing the joysticks, if you do have to replace your right joystick, unfortunately you are gonna to have to remove the heat shield because it covers the panel that we need. However, in my case, it's only the left, so we won't need to remove that. So because we don't have to remove the heat shield, the next thing we're gonna do is start taking out all the ribbon cables. So as you can see, here they are, and the first thing we're gonna do is grab our little pliers, then start unplugging them. When you go to unplug your ribbon cables, there are these two small little black locks, I think they are. So don't forget you have to flick them up before you start pulling them out. Sorry for the shoddy camera work. It was really difficult trying to film and do it at the same time, but just make sure that the locks are fully upright. All you need to do is flick them up and then you can start removing the cable. So I started with the top two and I also was really gentle when I was pulling these. You don't need a lot of force. Then I moved on to the bottom one here. Again, sorry for the bad camera work. It took me a little while, but eventually I did get the bottom one there it goes. Then I moved on to the final one down below, which does take a little bit of effort to pull, but it's not that big of a deal. Now make sure that all the locking clips are fully loosened before you start pulling, guys. But there you have it. One, two, three, four. All the ribbons are pulled, and now we're ready for the next step. Now it's time to remove the motherboard, and as you can see here, there are six screws that we have to take off initially. Now each screw is different sizes and actually different colors, so make sure you remember which one goes where. So let's remove these screws, and then we can take off the shoulder buttons. So with all the screws removed, now it's time to slide out the shoulder button. It comes out really easily. And while we're there, we're also gonna remove the ribbon cable that is connected to the power and volume as well. Now, before we can remove the motherboard fully from the system, we actually have one more screw right at the bottom of the speaker, I believe it is. So we're gonna unscrew that. Then as we move the speaker off the motherboard, it'll reveal one more screw, which is holding the motherboard in place. So we're gonna remove that screw and then we're off to the next step. Now with all that done, grab your pliers and slowly jiggle out your motherboard. It might be a little sticky, so work it gently, gently, remove it, and the joystick is now revealed so we can replace it. And it's only being held together by two screws. So, as always, we're gonna grab our screwdriver, wish it out, and then we're gonna replace it. Look at this broken hunk of shit. Broken, broken, broken. However, look at this new lovely piece of shit. I mean, this new lovely piece of hardware. And oh my God, it's shiny. All right, so let's put it all back together and hopefully we didn't screw up and it all works. Now, when you are installing your new joystick, it might be a little tricky. So you gotta wiggle it around a little bit. And I do have to apologize for getting my head in the frame, but it is a whole hell of a lot easier to screw if it's down on a flat surface instead of trying to do it up in the air for you guys. Once the joystick is in, play around a little bit with the stick to make sure it feels right and it's depressing really well when you click it as a button. 
After that, you're gonna place the motherboard back in or the daughter board, I actually don't know what it's called. And the first screw you're gonna put back in is the screw that was covered by the speaker. From there, I actually attached the ribbon cable for the power and volume because I thought it would just be easier to put in with nothing else in my way. So after I got the first ribbon cable done, I actually went through and connected all the other ribbon cables. However, it's a lot easier to install the ribbon cables when there's no shoulder button or no speaker in your way. So now that I've connected all the cables, the next thing I did was I replaced the speaker with this tiny little screw at the bottom. After the speaker, I moved on to the shoulder buttons and ensured that I screwed them down with the correct screws. Remember how I said to keep track of what screws go where because there are two different colors. So as you can see here, the silver screw that you should have left is installed in the area that is closest to the shoulder buttons. Then there's only one area left, which is where the gold screw goes. Ensure that all your screws are nice and tight. Don't over tighten them because we don't want to damage the board. From there, what we're gonna do is close it up. However, I don't want you to screw it in yet because I wanna make sure that the system works and the joystick is working properly in case we have to take it apart. All right, here is the moment of truth. So, so far, the power button works. So we got that correct. And wow, I should've really charged my switch before I did this. All right, but you know what? It seems to be working really well. Nice and smooth, there's no sticky points. The switch is responding. So you know what, all in all, I think it's pretty good. Don't forget to check the volume because we did have to remove that ribbon cable and that area of the switch. But mine seems to be working, so all in all, I think we're pretty good to go and use the rest of the screws to screw it all down. So when we're screwing it all down, we're just gonna do it in reverse. So we're gonna start with the bottom and the top before making our way to the edges. Now again, there are two different sizes of screws. The smaller of the two is gonna be used for the top and the bottom of your Nintendo Switch Lite, and the longer ones are gonna be used for the back. So that just about does it. Don't over tighten them. We don't wanna ruin the plastic. Final screw there. Then work it around the edges just to make sure that it's nice and tight. And there you have it. You know what, guys? I think it looks pretty good. My God, I gotta clean my screen. But that's how it is. That's how you replace a joystick in your Nintendo Switch Lite. So just like that, our Switch is all fixed and now we're ready to play again. So hopefully this video helped you out in case you break your Switch Lite just like I did. So thanks again for stopping by guys, and as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you online.